hello hello welcome to a new reading vlog i would like to catch up on my library books i do have quite a big stack of them currently i am reading the sweetest remedy by jane igaro i started this today actually so i'm hoping that maybe we can choose the other books within this vlog that i would like to read as well i think also i might make this like a type of weekly vlog weekly vlog i've read so much this is my current stack out from the library they are in order of their due date this actually actually isn't due the soonest but it is one that i would like to include in this vlog it's a graphic novel so i think i should get through it pretty quickly next is before i let go by kennedy ryan and then city under one roof so i feel like ideally i would like to read these first legends and lattes i just borrowed a few days ago and night crawling i actually already have planned for another video this one is quite chunky though so i feel like i probably shouldn't pair these with these other two these are my options thankfully though none of them are overdue <laughs> let me tell you about the current book that I'm reading right now since I'm almost 40% of the way through already. This I think was marketed as a romance, but it's reading very contemporary. It just has a touch of romance. It's more about a family drama. Hannah, our main protagonist, was raised by her white single mother and finds out as an adult that her Nigerian father has passed away and it is in his will or his, it's like one of his final wishes was for all of his children to attend his funeral in Nigeria. She has a really complicated relationship with her father or has like no relationship with her father she always kind of resented him for not wanting to be a part of her life but she was a child conceived out of wedlock and has a lot of mixed emotions about going to his funeral because she feels like she does not owe him anything but she has always wanted to know more about her nigerian culture the yoruba culture that she's never really been able to be a part of or like immerse herself in because she did not have a relationship with her father she goes to nigeria to banana island one of nigeria's most affluent areas to meet her father prestigious family. He is a well-known, respected man, very wealthy. He's known as a chief there in terms of upholding traditional laws. There is maybe going to be a romance as far as I can tell, being almost halfway through, but that's definitely on the back burner. I definitely wouldn't market this as a romance, although I have seen some reviews saying that it was mismarketed, so I'm glad I kind of went into it not really knowing that it was that. It's one of my personal goals today to read 250 pages. I've like finished another book today for a different video, and so I only needed to read 127 pages of this, but I've already read 124 pages and I'm really flying through it. There are different perspectives. She has a bunch of other siblings, half siblings that she did not know about. Her family did not know that she existed until a few days ago. A lot of them are obviously taken aback. They don't like her. They're having difficulty coming to terms with accepting her. Although one sister who I really, really like, Dami, she is so carefree. She's so nice. She's a lot of fun. She has taken to Hannah right away. I really enjoy her character. Tiwa is... Um, a bitch but she like understandably she has been lied to her half sister was born out of wedlock she cheated on her mother i can understand like not wanting to really connect with this person they're all staying under the same roof and it turns out that their father wanted to take this one last vacation to dubai and he wanted to invite hannah actually she's searching for a lot of answers still learning a lot about her culture i'm having fun exploring this part of her culture with her it is getting pretty dramatic but there are a few siblings who are like warming up to her. I'm not really sure why there's like other POV so far because it's all the siblings. I think there's five of them, including Hannah. It's a lot. It's adding a lot of background so we can get to know the other characters, but they weren't really mentioned in the synopsis. So I'm not really sure why they have all the POVs. to get in on reading my next book which is going to be the graphic novel usually my reading day finishes when i go to sleep but days like today i like to start at 12 to give myself more reading hours in the day if i feel like i'm not going to be able to do that much reading fridays i usually work later when i come home i spend time with coda we're going to actually finish my reading day early today because i did read so so much i'm actually excited because this graphic novel is going to be the second one in the series so much 
much yesterday so i read over 250 pages which was my goal so even just with reading the sweetest remedy which i read 218 pages of i read 80 more pages than my initial goal and i did finish it i kept reading it after i finished the amulet which i will get to as well and i'm giving this 3.75 stars it was four stars but the ending really just like wasn't really doing it for me this is definitely a contemporary story a little bit coming of age since she's discovering this whole other part of her identity meeting her family that she didn't really know existed i really did love hannah i could already tell that i did from the first couple of pages most of the chapters are in her pov there was a little bit of insight with the other povs but i think most importantly like hannah is going to be our main protagonist but you will find other povs from other characters was it really necessary i don't know but i didn't really mind it either i didn't really like the ending i feel like it was resolved too quickly the conflict i would be more angry but hannah kind of just brushed it off as like oh but we're family ha 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 and i didn't i didn't love that it just felt too simple and also like her romance with lawrence just it felt really meant to be at the beginning by the end i just like didn't understand it it just all happened super super quickly as you saw i was reading amulet this is the second book in the first book emily and navin are moving into this ancestral family home this creature takes away their mother and they are thrown into this completely new realm it turns out that emily is now going to be the new stonekeeper she has to take on the responsibilities and they have to save their mom. They're in this totally new world. I really like the art style. I think this is middle grade, but I gave this one four stars. I think I gave the first one three or four as well. I've already put the third book on hold and I've been enjoying this world. New characters have been introduced. There's a lot more risks. I think it's really cute. Today, I am going to be starting a new book, City Under One Roof by Iris Yamashita. I have not yet started it. I actually saw this at a bookstore in Seattle about a year ago and took a photo of it and then finally remembered that I had it. So this is a mystery. It was giving me sci-fi, but it's actually a mystery. A local teenager discovers a severed hand and foot washed up on the shore of the small town of Point Metier, Alaska. A detective from Anchorage is coming to investigate the possible murder in an isolated place that could only accessed by a tunnel, but a blizzard causes that tunnel to close down and this detective Kara is stuck with all the suspicious residents of the town, all 205 of whom live in the same high-rise building and are as icy as the weather so Kara's teaming up with Joe who is a local police officer there's like a some gang members from a nearby native village this is her debut novel but she is actually the screenwriter of Oscar nominated movie letters from Iwo Jima. Pretty interested. I feel like I haven't read Mystery Thriller in a while. This one is just under 300 pages. I feel like the point where I read up to yesterday is kind of the beginning of where the story is starting to happen. I was being fancy with the pronunciation. It is point Medier, Alaska, which is boring and so American. This town of Point Medier, people during the off season leave. The people who are left, it's only 250 of them and they all live in this one building. So that's where all the suspects are. They're this tight-knit community. They all know each other because there's so little of them. This book so far has been alternating POVs between someone in the town and then Kara, the detective, our main character, which has been kind of interesting too because it allows you to look into what life is like there the mindsets of the people there and how they view outsiders such as Kara. Although she is from Alaska, she's not from their town. She doesn't really know how things work here. So I'm not really sure why she's coming in here and like she still has jurisdiction and she's allowed to work as a detective. I'm not very far into it, but I am liking it. It is kind of looking like it's going to be the same two people in town, Lonnie and Amy. Lonnie has been to the Institute, which I think is like a mental institution. The townspeople kind of like make fun of her. Someone keeps tabs on her. I think it's the chief of police. And then there's Amy, who is the young girl who her mother owns like the Chinese restaurant. And I believe she's the one who discovered the severed hand and foot. Kara does have her own ulterior motives of being here, which I have just figured out why. And she is going to be partnering up with Joe Barkowski, the local police officer, but I'm not really sure how the gang members from a nearby 
Native Village is going to play in and whether or not Kara is actually going to find some closure for her separate situation. Hello, hello, it's a Tuesday. I did a little bit of reading before heading off, like getting ready for work. I ended up finishing City Under One Roof by Iris Yamashita. I think I had like 80 something pages left. I feel really good about that first of all um, because thus far now my page count, I read almost 900 pages. I think it was like 876, 56 pages. So I feel really great because I do still have a couple days to complete another book for this vlog at least which means I will have my fourth library book down. I'm giving it three stars. It was kind of average. I feel like there was potential of it being four stars and I really fell for Kara and her situation of why she wanted to come to Point Medier but I feel like I wanted more out of that situation towards the end and it's like a different type of ending that does kind of wrap things up but it wasn't exactly what I wanted and it kind of bonds her more to Point Medier and the community that they have there. I also didn't really understand the different POVs. Obviously, I understood Kara because she's the main person, right? She's on the blurb. But then there was the POVs from the little girl Amy and Moose Lady Lonnie. Those POVs did help to move the story along, but they didn't seem as important. For that reason, I feel like this book didn't need to have any type of POVs at all, and it could have just been third person with one main character. I didn't think the POVs were interesting because it made me think that they were more important than they needed to be, if that makes any sense without giving anything away. I'm gonna ask ask Koda to help me to choose which library book to pick next but I hopefully I can finish it because uh the ones that I have left are kind of long. As you get ready for work can I ask you for help on what book I should read next? So it's mystery, historical fiction, and I think this is romance. Oh, that was so easy. Koda ended up just picking the genre that he would most likely want to read, which is What Never Happened by Rachel Housel Hall. This is about Coco. She is fleeing from her like Catalina home. She wants to get away from her ex. She wants to see her aunt and get back to writing her craft, which is obituaries. And it works because there is a large elderly population on Catalina Island. But then when Coco realizes that there are some weird patterns and circumstances around these deaths don't seem as natural. She begins investigating and she's drawing connections between a serial killer's crime and her own family's tragedy. I didn't get to read much of what never happened yesterday because I did sleep on the train, but because I finished reading City Under One Roof before I started this, I was still able to read a combined 115 pages, which I feel really good about. Today's supposed to be the last day of the vlog, but I want to be able to finish this book so I might hack on a few more days. If I choose to complete it today, which is a Lot because this book is 407 pages and I've only read 30 of them. But if I read it between today and tomorrow, it still means that I have to read like over 200 pages. Will that be possible? We'll see. Our main character, she has had a very dark past. There is something that happened to her in her life that made her flee Catalina Islands in the first place and she's coming back to take care of her aunt. I'm not really sure how that's all going to tie in, but maybe she will finally get some closure. I've closed my laptop. I'm dedicating more time to reading. I've read maybe 70 or so pages now more of what never happened and I feel like it's starting to take this turn into horror or it's like trying to do both of that and I don't know if I really love that. It's like confusing me as to where the story is supposed to go. Like I really want Coco to get some closure and she's definitely very paranoid. She's unable to reach her therapist. She's kind of spiraling her a little bit. She has started her new job. She's finishing her first obituary. Her ex is still kind of chasing her and she's afraid of that but she's on island but that's like not really giving her any sort of security she's also now heard that there's a cannibal or something so that's still a rumor but she's obviously very nervous it's weird i finished it actually while drinking my sleepy girl mocktail and i have the tiniest bit left <laughs> This book is so long. It's like just over 400 pages. By the 300 page mark, I kind of was like, where's this going? What's going on? The whole time, Coco is very paranoid. Someone is obviously out to get her. No one else seems to take her very seriously on this island. Most of this book starts to take place at the beginning of lockdown during COVID. There's like obviously a lot of other things on people's minds and they live on an island. So it's a lot more difficult to get things with it being an island and a smaller population. The police is kind of already stretched thin. I really wanted to like this, but I'm giving it two stars. I kind of was just like, okay, and figuring out who the perpetrator was was so underwhelming and so 
boring and it was kind of just like oh okay i wanted to see if there were clues like they were definitely on my suspect list like anyone in her life was on my suspect list because it's an island she's a newcomer there are not a lot of people that she was connecting with because she was just was already really paranoid and really apprehensive about being here because she felt like no one really cared about what happened to her family she also just felt really annoying and was not surrounded by good people unfortunately this is two stars let's calculate how much i read in total i ended up reading a total of 1200 181 pages it's been so long since i've counted how many pages i've read in a vlog and it feels so good because i feel like when i was it wasn't really over a thousand and i feel really good having completed four books right three books in a graphic novel even the last one wasn't really great i feel like i read so much more than i typically would in a day because i wanted to focus on reading this and doing it in a weekly vlog and i think setting up little goals for myself of wanting to read this many pages throughout the day as opposed to having one year long goal of reading whatever many books is a lot more helpful and setting mini goals to accomplish it especially since i'm still behind to make good reads goals so i hope you all enjoyed please let me know what you're currently reading make sure to subscribe to check out my other vlogs because i have some fun ones coming up and i will see you all next time thank you so much for watching bye